Anthony L. Elmore, president and founder of the Proud Black Women's World Association, here today to bring you in another exciting Black Buddhist Lectures. We at the Proud Black Buddhist World Association are not only the Black Buddhist Voice in America, we are the Black Buddhist Voice in the world, and we are the only Black Buddhist organization in the world that do not have Asian Buddhist masters. When we learn that the Asians educated all Black history, culture, and language from the Buddhist teachings, we educated them out as our teachers. Now, today we're going to bring an exciting Buddhist lecture. My lecture today is Black Man Explains Why He Left SGI Buddhism. Now, in regards to the Buddhist teachings, I joined the Mahayana Buddhist religion by practicing Zen Buddhism in 1970. Now, in 1974, I joined a Buddhist set in America called NSA, which was an acronym for Nitrin Shoshu of America. NSA later became the SGI, and the lay organization started its own. I joined set NSA. Broke the split, I have changed and my views of society. SGI oh. on one hand, and that was Nitrin Shoshu. Now, through my Buddhist study, I learned the black history of Buddhism and that the ancient India, in ancient India, the people were called Naga. Some of them called the dead, they're known as Dravidians, they're known as Dalits, but originally India was called Eastern Ethiopia. Now, the kingdom where the Buddha was born is called Magadha. Magadha was founded by a black king, and his name was Sisu Naga. After Sisu Naga, we read about Buddhism, about Vimvasara. Vimvasara was a contemporary of the Buddha Shakyamuni. Now, those of you who are learning Buddhism from the Proud Black Buddhist World Association, I would like for you to Google a book it's a free book that's online. It's called The Journal of the Royal Asiatic Society of Great Britain and Ireland. Please understand that the Buddhist religion has a history of racism and that all of the black history, culture, and language has been extricated from the Buddhist religion. In my personal case, I was a member of the SGI slash NSA Buddhist set, and when I inquired about the Black Buddhist history, I went against the SGI leader, Dasaki Kato, who wrote in his book, it's called The Living Buddha. In the book, The Living Buddha, Dasaki Kato writes that the Buddha came from an Indo-Aryan cultural spirit. Now, by my understanding the history and the Black Buddhist um, history, I could no longer stay with the SGI Buddhist set, and I could no longer go along with the lie and a misrepresentation of Buddhism, so I left the SGI. I wrote a letter to the SGI in March of 1991, and I could no longer take it because I wanted to see the black Buddhist history to be inclusive of our Buddhist teachings. Now, there you got it. I left the SGI Buddhist organization because I wanted to learn a Buddhism that is the true history that's inclusive of our black history, culture, and language. Thank you very much. Tell me what's the line I see. Disregard what the facts may be. All ancient icons show a simple fact. They all show that the Buddha was black. I believe in facts and the Kato was wrong. Buddha was no Aryan. This song saw the history. But those who rewrite history. Well said so that there's something to understand. It was a thousand years after Buddha's death. His teacher ride in Japan. Let me tell you something that makes sense. The Buddha's teachings did not start in the Orient. Those of you make a religious decision, the Buddha's teaching.
no Asian 